Well, good morning and welcome back to the workshop. Thank you very much for the kind feedback in my last video where I was feeling a bit uh, deflated with the um, problems I had building the axle boxes or machining the axle boxes to the state they ended up in. Um, it was really nice to, to see that I'm, I'm not the only one experiencing it. And I'd like to, uh, well, I'd like to call out everyone really, but one thing that really resonated with me was Matt Shivers, who has recently been putting together the bogey the pony truck of his seven and a quarter inch gauge Tinkerbell and said, oh, at least I'm not alone with uh, having uh, one step forward and two steps back. And I realized actually that's that's probably quite true. Uh, my first inclination when I have a problem is to immediately use some very strong Anglo-Saxon words and then stop the camera so that it can't track me panicking or trying to figure out what I'm going to do or bodging it. Uh, but I realise that's probably where the most growth is, is trying to figure out how to resolve those problems. Uh, so I'm going to endeavour to keep that footage in going forward. So I've got the thickness of this piece now down to size. Now I'm just reducing the height. I'm doing that by measuring the height from the top surface here to the parallels and then comparing that against the height in the slot of the axle box. So this distance from here to here, this actually happens to be the axle box I'm going to be doing it in. And by then I can push the knee up to cut it down to the right height so that it hopefully is a nice flush fit across the top. Definitely the most annoying thing about this is every time I need to remeasure is getting all of the swarf out from on top of the parallels. Uh, in order that I can get a, an accurate measurement. So I'm just going to be repeating that quite a few times to get this down to the height. So I'll save you watching that and come back to you shortly. So here's the axle box we did previously. And here is the keep we've just machined, slotting into the next one. So there you go, we've got two. And I need to repeat this for this axle box and this axle box. So again, I'm not going to let you suffer through watching me do exactly the same thing twice. Just let it be known that I'm using this piece of cast iron to make the keeps for these. So when that's done, I'll come back to you. When I brought the problem of squaring up stock to the Mid-Sussex Model Engineers Club uh, in Haywards Heath, which is my, my local one, uh, a very kind gent named Ben, who runs Ben's Workshop on YouTube, and you may have seen him in the comments, uh, suggested I look at the Joe Pazinski method of machining, uh, which is more akin to workshop production machining rather than hobbyist, which is if you've got a stock that's big enough, you can bring it outside of the boundaries of the vise. And in theory, you can you can machine five faces in, in one go, in one setup. And given how much I bemoaned the, the repeated setups in the previous operations, I think this is probably not a, a bad thing to try and emulate. The only proviso is I'll need to split this blank into two because my keeps are both fractionally different, as I mentioned in the previous video. So I'm going to get on with that right now. So I've got two axes uh, now sawn rather than mi milled. Um, but luckily, these are the axes that I need to obviously reduce down in size. Taking from the device for a lot of people in the uh, previous uh, Video, I think it was Kevin Woods at least, said uh, make sure you leave the parts at least 10th hour over until you're you're pretty sure. So uh, I'm, I'm leaving well uh, enough space when roughing this out. Uh, but I need to take this down um, you know, to, almost to the scribe line, which is um, way below where the saw cut is. So I'm going to get it nice and flat first. Then I'm going to use my uh, depth micrometer to compare that with the hole in the other axle box, which is about uh, 939 thou. Uh, so yeah, let's get on with that. Oh hey, more brushing, more checking. <laughs> I'm only just being so careful on this one because it really is like some of the most crucial measurements of, of this part of the operation. But blow me if it doesn't get a bit tiresome. There we go. And that's the height. 9.38. So I think we can call that one good in terms of height. I'm going to go check it in the 
axle box. So here's the axle box and here is our new piece slotting in there pretty bloody perfectly. The top surface here, or bottom depending on which way around you're looking, uh, will uh, drop in uh, which way around is it? Uh, it is... Yes, right. The This surface here needs to be taken down to the same thickness here. So let's get on with it. You may ask yourself, why is there a little brass bar in there? And the answer is because I'm a terrible engineer. Apparently my great grandfather was fond of pointing at things and saying, I can cut through that in one go without stopping. I'm assuming he was mainly dealing in softwoods. <laughs> Right, we've got the axle boxes machined to their external dimensions and the keeps in there. There are obviously a fair few more features to machine on them, most notably the giant hole in the middle where the axle goes through. Um, however, I thought it might be prudent to get the chassis assembled first, because uh, I have all the components for it, and primarily to make sure that it's all square and I don't need to make any more of this because that would be a, a real downer if we got to that point. Um, but also the thickness of the horns will determine the width of the slot on the axle boxes and it may be that I need to match them uh, and the width of the horn, the width of the horn slot, will determine the depth of the slots on the side of the axle boxes when they slide up and down. So yeah, probably the next thing to do is to get this together. <laughs> 